And welcome everyone. It is episode 111 of Manifesting with Meg. And do I have a wonderful guest for you guys today? It's more a way in which we can all get excited with movement. And our theme today is boldness be my friend. So I think what better marriage of the two to be bold in our movement. And with that, I have Ketty Herbe. She is the founder of Simply M, the movement. So before we start, we always get intentional. We set our intentions. So at the end of the interview, we match that to the magical guide to bliss. And away we go as I introduce Ketty. Wow. She was born in Cuba and raised in Miami. Ketty has a double bachelor's in dance and psychology from Florida International University. She facilitated movement and creative writing workshops for 15 years, so she's no stranger to this, with at-risk teenage girls through a program created by her dance professor, Leslie Neal, called Art Spring. Fantastic. Her desire to bring the healing and transformative power of music and dance into women's lives has birthed her new community, which I can't wait to talk about. And I'm so glad. I think even tangentially I'm a part of because I got to see her work a room with movement and it's pretty quite, it's quite amazing. Simply M the movement is the name of this community that she's birthed. Ketty won't stop until every woman's heart is free to express the truest expression of who she is. What a beautiful intention, mind, body, and soul. So let's dance, which let's dance. I think, like I said, 111 is this episode. And for me, I love numerology and I love the magic of the ones. Okay. So with that, I would think that something really magical or something wonderful is going to happen because here you are. Definitely. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Meg. This is such a treat for me. Um, I'm just excited to have this conversation with you. And I just feel honored that you asked me to be a guest. You know, I have to say, I people ask me rhyme or reason why who I choose for my guests and why. And I really think it's really more for a guest. It's a gift for me. I'm going to be completely, you know, front and center. I want to talk to people who can elevate my life. And we had the beautiful opportunity to meet each other for at Shine and through Richard Jurgens, which I love him to death. Um, and I, you know, you came in it with this energy that just, if you, the room was dark before, your light <laughs> shines beyond. And I love even the light that shines behind you. And in the mirror, for that matter, babe, you look so, so cool. Yes. And you are so cool. You are <laughs> really cool. It's so great to have you on my show. I think that, you know, you certainly... Um, bring it. You say it and you bring it. And I followed you on Instagram. I followed you in all your social media sites. And just to see you navigate the world, you are literally coming to the fruition of your mission statement, you know, to have all of the women in the world express their truest expression of themselves. And what a gift that is to free the soul to do that. You know, I, I'm excited. <laughs> me too. Me too. And I, and I remember like, I always do every moment where I just step out in, onto a dance floor into the middle of a room or a circle of women. And it just, it's something that I can't help because I really love connecting oh with other people and especially with women. I'm, I'm definitely a girl's girl. I'm all about um, empowering women. And even if I'm scared or even if I'm hesitant, I do it because I never know that's the reminder I give myself, like who I'm going to inspire to do the same. And, and just to feel that energy being broken up, meaning like when everyone's just kind of looking around and worried about what everyone else is thinking, you know, you're always waiting for that first person to get out on the dance floor, like at a party. Um, and I love being that person because I want to get the momentum going. I love it. And, and you know, it's really quite amazing because not that you – are waiting to do it, but you do it with such effortless ease. I think at the shine party, people were coming around asking me, wow, she's a vibe, right? She <laughs> has, and it's really kind of cool to see people show up in their authenticity that way. And certainly you did, and you're not afraid to do so. And with that, I love the fact that today's theme is boldness be my friend. I think, you know, we all say, oh, boldness can't be for me, it's for somebody else. But the reality is, is that when we actually take the steps into the life of our dreams in that bold, fantastic, exciting, inspirational way, then 
you know, make it your friend, your partner, your dance partner at that, it starts to change the whole momentum of your life. And the quote is just that Shakespeare says, boldness be my friend. And it goes on to culminate in the transforming dreams into reality month of April in the magical guide to bliss. I think that, you know, I, I've said this often, it, it is one of my favorite months in the book. And because of the mere fact that, you know, how exciting it is to see your dreams actually transform into actually reality, something that was in your imagination coming to actually the fruition of what is. And you can speak to that because of your Simply M the Movement studio too. But I yeah. want to read to you the insight. And I would love your insight into that as well, because boldness is magical, adventurous, and it sets you free. It takes guts to be bold. It really does. And the fact that you're inspiring other people, other women specifically to do that through dance is exciting because everyone's like, you know, remember, remember the teenagers we were at the dance party and everyone's looking around kind of awkward and like, who's going to look like a fool first, you know, it's not even that. It's just like, if you don't move your body, you lose the opportunity to for movement in your body. And the first one on the, you know, first one, it's like the Pied Piper. You get out there, people will start to follow you for sure. Right. And it's a beautiful way to be followed, you know, into that. So rest assured when we mat we embrace that magic inside, you'll know you have what it takes. And then, you know, I just saw a reel or a video and it was wonderful. My friend Hector Prado posted it. And I really wanted to say that is an artist rendering of a man playing with the devil chess. And the interesting thing is that someone who sees it from a different perspective, a chess player saw the painting and they were like, well, they have one more move. It's not over yet. Right. So right. maybe this is the message that everybody needs to know is that we always have one more move and yeah. why not do it to some amazing music, right? Amazing merengue salsa or cumbia. I don't know. <laughs> but the whole point is use what you have in your life to keep you going. So you gather all your courage and you muster it to do that one thing that calls you. And we, all will dance with you. So what are your thoughts on this? I love that this is our theme on 111, episode 111 today. And it's almost 333, which is another favorite of my number. So go ahead, go for it. Yes, yes. Well, I love what you just described about um, someone else looking at the board and saying, but wait, he has one more move. Um, I feel like a lot of times, and I'm speaking for myself, yeah. you're just in the game of your life, right? And you're focused and you're thinking, whatever situation has outdone you, right? Like that's it, it's over. And one of the things that has really helped me so much is realizing that it takes a tribe, it takes a village to raise a keddy. And till this day, I surround myself, yeah. I, I surround myself with, you know, coaches, mentors, amazing friends like you, like Richard, um, because when you step into a situation and you talk to someone else and you show them what's going on and you're, you're real about it, right? They're going to point out, wait a second, have you thought of this or what mm -hmm. about that? And, and it's true. We always have one more move. And that's something that we tend to forget. I know I have when sometimes I've been in my darkest moments or in situations that I thought there's no way I'm going to, you know, come out of this on the other side. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I have to point out to you what you just said. It takes one, you know, it takes a village, to, uh, it takes a village to to raise a Ketty, right? <laughs> Her name is Ketty, right? Let's just be honest. Like, if, if you guys have missed that, yeah, I'm speaking about myself in a third person, but me, <laughs> like, I realize that, you know, it's like it, it does, it does, and I feel like no one should ever try to do it alone, and that's the reason why I pay it forward, right? Mm -hmm. Every day on in, in, in a constant manner, not just through dance, but in every way that I possibly can. And it's funny because we're just like synced with this. The other day I heard about this new book, um, Ed uh, Milet or Millet. I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name. He's a, a speaker, but it's called The Power of One More, right? Mm -hmm. One more conversation, Love one it. more idea. And yeah. I thought, oh, my, wow, that's awesome. That's inspirational. And how, it's true. How amazing, you know, and, and back to you, because you are a force in the Simply M movement. And I think that this is really kind of cool because I've always found a certain magic in, 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 in music and, 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 you know, watching some people actually, you know, dance with the world, dance in their life, or just simply dance to the sounds that are coming out of whatever speaker. It's, um, 
it's a it's kind of like a symphony you know it's a symphony of this effortless flow of life when you're just in the momentum and you're in the movement and you're just getting lost in this wonderful energy that brings you to another place you know you're a magical manifester too let's let's i listen i spot it i'll call it out you are and <laughs> it, it, it's true and and the reality is is that with that you know comes a lot of you know, I believe what I believe. I believe in the world kind of invades that. And they're like, tell you another thing. And you're just like, no, 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 no. Back away, back away, back away. But it's hard to like balance the two. I, sure. wanted, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you help yourself move better in a world that perhaps may be the naysayer that shows up a little bit over and over, but you, you've you come to a point where you've seen the fruition or the transforming into reality, your dream in your studio? Yes, that's, that's a really great question because- it is true. You know, there are a lot of dream crushers, dream killers out there. Um, you know, there's been many times that I've shared an idea, whether it was Simply M or something else. And, you know, someone would ask, well, what does this have to do with that? Or how would you go about that? Or maybe now is not a good time to do that. You know, there's always. Yeah. Yes. So I learned a lot of practical tips that have worked for me. Um, <laughs> I like tips <laughs> no, yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. Things that I found have really, um, just kind of protected my creative energy and mm -hmm. has helped me protect my own intentions and my voice because making sure that we stay true to our own voice is very important. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, you know, we're not like the little mermaid that you got your voice back all of a sudden. Oh, and I have my voice. You have to keep right. Listening to it and working on it and speaking up and, and encouraging yourself and nurturing yourself. So I would say one of the first things is really be mindful of who you share with, right? Mm. Just know like who are the people that you know when you share something with them, they're going to give you tips that really help you like, you know, in a helpful way versus where they're just going to be like Debbie Downers or very negative about it yeah. just because, right? And then the other thing is, is the comparison game, um, mm -hmm. you know, to to really continue to manifest in your own life and to listen to your voice and to follow your dreams. It's important to not fall into the comparison trap. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's great because like creativity, right? Like I love to see what other people create in dance and in all kinds of art. Right. But I look at it now and I remind myself, I'm looking at it as inspiration. And I'm also mm -hmm. looking at it to feel good and say, there's so many people out there doing such amazing creative things. Yes, keep going. Versus like, yeah. oh, I don't look like her. Or I don't dance like that. Or Right? Yeah, no, absolutely love mm -hmm. what you just said. Because I think <laughs> you can get caught up in the whole social media drama of, perfection that's out there and then compare yourself to what you believe is these happy, wonderful lives. When the reality is, is that you're comparing your inside to someone else's outside at the same time, you know, you don't want to in many ways douse the fire of your dreams. You want to light the fire of your dreams. So the other right. point that you said is surround yourself or share your dreams with those who might add you know to it exactly that flame goes from a spark to a, a an actual burning in fuego right so yeah. well the, i think one of the things that you know i liked i loved about you you know first of all is that you're an incredibly welcoming person you're beautiful outside and you're just you're you're inside you can tell that you are there to share and bring up the others around you because you know as much as it's like as long as i'm here i might as well right i might yeah. as well make a difference in such a way that i bring kindness and whatever i came through someone was made better by by virtue of knowing you absolutely it's funny um this might sound a little bit dramatic but it's actually true it happened like a week and a half ago a very good friend of mine took a huge leap of faith and he relocated all the way from um florida to washington state Oh, wow. It was a it was a big move in every sense. And something happened where he thought that his car was stolen. He had only been there for two weeks. Yeah. It turned out that the apartment complex made a huge mistake. But anyways, he reached out to me um, and he was already like doubting. Did I did I imagine you moved to a new place oh two weeks later and your car stolen? And he was like, did I make the wrong decision? Now I'm wondering. And yeah. I said, no, sit tight. I'm like, 
I know what you're thinking. I would be thinking that too. My mind would go there. I'm like, this is a test. Let's start thinking of solutions. What do we need to do? Wow. It all worked out. And one thing that I said to him in a message, and I meant it. That's why I just want to say it sounds dramatic. Yes. I'm Cuban, but this yes. is real. Like I'm not being exaggerated. And I told him, as long as I'm alive, you are never alone. Oh, and I meant that. That's like, awful. in other words, it's, uh, and, you know, as long as I'm, I'm here, you are not alone. And none of us ever are, but I think we need to hear it from, you know, someone from a friend who, who yeah. really means that, Hey, no matter what I'm here for you. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. To help you. Like you you don't have to go through things alone. And, and we came oh. up with, with ways to, to solve his issue because he was kind of like blocked, you know, when you're in a really bad place and all of a sudden he's without family and friends around, you just need someone to step in. Now imagine if I was like what I described below before, and then I was like, oh, my God, and freaking out along with him, right? Freaking out along with him and, and bringing up all these negative things. How would that be helpful, right? Yeah. Even if later he decided that he does want to come back, there wouldn't be anything wrong with that. It's just that what wouldn't be the best is to make a knee-jerk decision right. because fear comes in, and especially fear from outside that feeds the fear that you have inside. And, you know, to the point of being boldness, being your friend, this person is being bold and he exactly. needed a friend who is bold so that, you know, it could talk you off the ledge. And, 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 and you know, kind of like I, I just said fire to your dreams, but not your hair on fire running around yeah. as if ah, the world is coming to an end. The reality is, is that sometimes you need that friend who's like, it's OK. You know, the, the voice of reason. And it's beautiful that you offered yourself up to this person to support him as he ventures on to the unknown uncertainty. But exactly. maybe now he sees it differently. So I love that you put that. And the fact of the matter is, I'm certain that, that that's not the only person you are that way with. Because having known you briefly, but at the same time, having known people who have known you and heard, hearing about you from them, your, your reputation precedes you. And certainly that's why I like to know what in fact inspires you to do what you do to show up. And I love this part because it gives me wonderful quotes or wonderful, you know, tomes or images to take me perhaps through, you know, <laughs> a challenging day or two. Right. So this yeah. is the first one you brought to my attention. Every time I dance, I turn into a better version of me. And it's a perfect place to start because yeah. you are a dancer. And, and I would love to know, even as you answer this question, and I know I'm like inserting my own narrative in there, but what brought you to dance? So uh, funny enough, um, what really brought me to dance was when I was a little girl, and I'm sure many other women and, and, and men too can relate, where I was in my room and my stuffed animals were like my favorite audience, you know? And I was and I was just dancing and singing and jumping on my bed to Olivia Newton John, Madonna, Cindy Lauper, all that stuff. And I would watch um, Xanadu, super cheesy moves, movie. If anyone knows Love where it. Olivia Newton John was roller skating with yeah. music, watched it a million times. And it's just like music and dancing to music, moving my body to music would just take me to another place. But it really did made me feel like the best version of myself, right? Yeah. Because I was, I, I felt connected. I felt free. I felt, I really felt alive. And then my parents, um, they immigrated from Cuba. So I went to public school. They couldn't afford for me to take, you know, a dance studio classes. So I always took dance at the YMCA mm. and at school. So interestingly enough, I always continued to dance, but I'll be very honest, you know, I always, used to think, well, I'm not a real dancer, right? Sure. Because I would think that because I wasn't in a, in a dance studio where they had a big recital and beautiful um, costumes and stuff. And that's one of the reasons why I say that when you dance, and I love this quote, you become a better version of yourself. There's nothing in there that says when you dance in a leotard, when you dance with, a, with your hair in a bun, when you dance inside a studio, and we could even change that word out and say, when I move, yeah. right? When I move to music. Um, and know. that was that was my mission um, going forward, especially once I met my professor, Leslie Neal, that you mentioned in the intro, was to make sure that everyone knew that we're all dancers. We're all movers. Because that was something that even for me, I thought, 
And even in college, even at the university, I, I studied mostly folkloric dance. So Afro-Cuban, West African, wow. um, Afro-Brazilian and like modern. So I wasn't a ballerina. I wasn't a jazz dancer. Right. But we, we all were in school together and we all had like a big showcase every year. Mm -hmm. And when I would see the ballerinas and, and the jazz dancers, I was like, oh, gosh, I can't do that. Right. So that's why I talk now at 46 about the comparison game, because I just spent too many years of my life doing that. And I want to make sure that other people, I can inspire them to not to not spend their time there in that place. That So if that message can get out to whoever <laughs> is listening to this today, you know, the reality is it, if it stops you from doing the thing that you love, then you need to step aside and boldly grab on with all your might to the thing that you love because- yeah it's 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 definite contrast i focus there and i feel like my the thing that gives me lifeblood is taken away or i focus to what perhaps maybe one of your classes one of your seminars one of your things and then it comes back and then yeah. you feel like you said i move i turn into a better version of me i love that this one i had to put after this one because i love this as long as the spirit of a warrior lives in the heart of even just one of us the dance is not over daniela bolelli oh my god first of all the fact that the word warrior is in there i'm not surprised at all with regard to you but the spirit of the warrior means that even if we don't look in a mirror and actually see like a you know a fighter or whatever the dance is not over because we our spirit is still there and it comes through so tell me a little bit about what this means to you yeah you know so thank you and i'm so glad that you put this one next i i think it's one of for sure like one of my favorites so i really connect with my heritage with my lineage with this especially on the maternal side right um in the sense that dancing is so it, it's just in our genes you know, I want to use the word primitive, but in the way of saying just like, just natural, right? It's not like this, like fancy, like it, it's those things too. Yeah. But meaning like throughout the ages, um, dance was used to celebrate life, celebrate death, uh -huh. right? The, mm -hmm. Going on to the next life to, to when you're happy, when you're sad, but always in community, right? Always in circles mm -hmm. and, and all coming together. Circles. And, and let's face it, like same thing, like the chest thing, like, let's face it, there are times where collectively, and, and we can all relate to this because of the past couple of years, you just feel like down and out, like yeah. it's over. But if one of those warriors, if one of those people in that group still hears the music, still beats that drum, st still says, hey, let's all get up and we all start moving. It's like, you know, when then Braveheart, when Mel Gibson's like, <laughs> we're going, right? And so everybody's like, yes. So it's like, you just need one warrior, one person to remember the dance, to remember the music, to get everybody going. And that's when we know, like, it's it's never over. It's funny how it comes back to to the chess image that you said, too. I love it. So, you know, and it all plays a part. It all synchronicities yeah. of life are so beautiful. It's amazing, you know. And the, and the reason I mentioned too that I really connect that with like my lineage and my heritage is because my mom and all the women in my family um, have just really always shown me that kind of spirit, mm. right? Um, there was never a moment that there wasn't music playing in, in our house. Yeah. And no matter what was going on, it's just felt like there's still one more song. <laughs> so I really feel like I, I really learned that from my mom, especially. Yeah. That's a beautiful gift your mother gave you too. And I think, you know, certainly in the mornings when we wake up and maybe they're a little heavier than most and, you know, maybe you're not really wanting to face the day. I've been putting music on like for now I'm vibing pink pink because I'm going to the concert oh. soon. So the trust fall. I'm like, oh, it's just the warrior in you. Like, right. She yeah. is a warrior, right. In, in and of, it, of itself. But the warrior in you, it's like, it's like the battle cry are the songs and the lyrics and the music. And, you know, even going to concerts and being in the flow, like we went to uh, Taylor Swift recently, just yeah. looking around everything and that you're a part of this incredible energy you know and then taking that back with you to wherever you show up in the world it's just so exciting and i love the fact that you keep saying the dance is not over it's not over till it's over and when it's over you want to look back and say you know, like you know the crowd starts to 
you know, applaud because you showed up and were bold in your life and you took yeah. the reins and said, this is what I desire. This is what I want and did not turn your back on your dreams. I love this. This is very exciting to me. And then of course, hope is hearing the music of the future. Faith is to dance to it. Okay. Hope and faith. My two favorite things lately, you know, kind of goes hand in hand. And I want to like ask this question to you at the same time that you incorporate your mission in life. Like what is the mission and how does you, this speak to that? Yeah. So this is, this is interesting. So this quote for me, it really reminds me of when you get like that whisper of of something yeah. that tells you like, you have an idea or there's just something beautiful that just comes to your mind, even if you're like in a dark moment, right? What happens is it can be very fleeting. Mm -hmm. It can escape you real fast, especially when those other thoughts start to like drown it out. And again, this is why I think that when we move our bodies and just follow just that little whisper, you could really start to change the state of things like, I'll give you an example, like, like a week and a half ago too, I, you know, I was having a, a, a difficult week, you know, it happens yeah. and just a lot of things I was feeling, you know, overwhelmed. And, um, I had an appointment up in Coral Springs to collaborate with someone, uh, a personal trainer. Um, and I was excited about that. Right. But I woke up feeling very heavy. Like, in other words, like no, no hope. Right. I sat down at my recliner for a second in the living room and I allowed myself, I gave myself permission to cry and to feel what I was feeling. Um, and, and I acknowledged it. Right. And I sat with it and then I said, okay, you know what you got to do. So I got up, got in my bathroom, turned on my speaker, turned on my music and started getting ready to some music. Now I didn't like try to fake it till I make it kind of thing. I just knew that if I didn't, kind of shift that if I didn't step into a different energy and move my body and it's happened, you know, used to happen to me years ago when I stopped dancing for a long time on a consistent basis, then it just pulls you down. Right. Oh, yeah. The hope just kind of goes down the it circles and it goes down the drain. Well, so um, I have a question for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. The music that you play in your bathroom, what is it? Like, what is, what are the tunes you turn to? Because music is so important in your life. What is it that you turn on when you need to like wipe, you know, you know, blush yourself up and get up, you know, start again. Right. Yeah. So my brain is kind of funny that way. So what I do is I, I, I shuffle on random oh, okay. because I have all kinds of music. So I love like all genres. Right. And so I just let the phone tell me like the message. I kind of feel like songs give me messages. And then if I'm not feeling that one, I skip to the next one and like that. Yeah. And sometimes there's even been a moment where one of um, my, like my meditative type music comes on yeah. and I wanted to hype myself up, but I'm like, oh, wait, wait, this is kind of cool. And then I move softly to it. And so I'm all over the place, to be honest with you, but I'm very, I like to be very random with my process well, that's, kind of, that's kind of fun you know it's so funny though it's like when i get hit by a song that is just like the tears come or the the yeah. elation comes i'm like i'll start shooting it out to all my friends oh my god you have to hear this song or this song and this song and this song and i think that this last week it's been karma karma from taylor swift i'm like karma you make so the words speak to me and that's a great it, song but the music of the future the faith to dance to it and then you know actually having the music at your fingertips to do that is so much fun well one of my favorite like hyped up songs to get and you mentioned pink this one wasn't that popular. It didn't really come out on the, the radio much or whatever, but it's called Just Like Fire. Oh, I love that one. Right? Yeah. So that that's that one, I'll blast that in my car if I'm like getting ready to go give a talk or something. And that one gets me really, really that's hyped your up. theme song, so to speak. That is it, you know? <laughs> that's one of those. That's one of them for sure. And I love Unstoppable. Oh, I was going to um, say Sia. Yeah, that's yeah. a great one. A great yeah. one. Oh, I love There's it. There's just so many. <laughs> Right. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Put music to our troubles and we'll dance them away. Oh, I mean, if there are no truer words spoken, this let this quote be, be the thing that we could all go back to. If we could shift out of like any kind of sadness or let it process or the emotions go through us. I always say emotere, you know, to go out of, move through us is, is the word emotion. Then this is 
to a to a great song what what better way to do it right and dance them away what is this how does this speak to you so so again like i know that all the ones that i picked are about music and dance but that's really that, that's really like my my love language uh, right my self love language and for others so and it melts our troubles away so like for example i just want to say let's say that you you've lost a loved one right mm -hmm. and you're in the grieving process so music isn't going to all of a sudden or anything, you know, just make that all go away. Um, I think of like trouble in the sense of when you're just really stuck, when you're just really stuck where you're, for example, not allowing yourself to grieve mm. or even you're not allowing yourself to be happy and celebrate because you're waiting for the next shoe to drop. Right. So I feel like music can help you move and movement move those feelings through and actually allow you to feel them completely without any restrictions. Yeah. So it's not even so much that it's going to make whatever problem go away. But for example, how many times too, like, have you been pondering a big problem, something that you're trying to figure out and just nothing comes and you go for a walk and for the runners, they go for a run right. and I would say, dance it out, move it out. And then, and then this weird bubbly surface thing happens Boop, like this little bubble thought and yeah. idea and you're like oh my god there it is yes, I love that. right yeah. because that because that's the thing um it's 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 all stuck inside I love so that that's, right so that's why i feel that music and moving it starts to kind of move those things around love stuff it. comes up um another thing is like dance is used a lot um for therapy right there's dance therapy yeah. it's a whole thing not everyone is aware but it is and I was listening to a talk by a dance therapist the other day, and she was explaining how anxiety mm. is just excitement with nowhere to go mm. and how you can do so many different exercises and things with music and movement yeah. where you can actually take that anxiety, Love it. feel it, look at it. And it, it literally magic, almost like magic will transform into what it really is. <sighs> And then you can you can release right, and it's an ongoing thing. But that's beautiful. That's perfect. I, and I was like, never take the music from me. Like let it let it always play in my head. And and I love that you said that. You know, dancing to music is exactly maybe what you need to unblock yourself, unstuck yourself. You know, because yeah. at the end of the day, you're moving. And I, I it's so funny because when my when my daughter and I got stuck in this is this is so interesting. I um was in New York last summer and we got stuck. Our plane got canceled and they're like, we're never going back. You know, they were like, never, it felt like we're never getting back to, to Miami. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, like you said, the anxiety. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I said, okay, we're moving. And I just started to walk. And I know mm -hmm. that, that, you know, perhaps, you know, it would have been better if there was music. Unfortunately, the music they play in American Airlines, you know, uh, uh, no, but you got, yeah, you got, but I had you got to move. Sure. I had, I had to move. And then the, the solutions came to me. Could you imagine that if you're sitting here and especially as writers or authors or even coaches or dancers, anyway, like you feel stuck, you put some music on just go work it out. Not only are you getting a great healthy kick, but you're also freeing those beautiful genius ideas that you spoke to. And I absolutely love that you brought that to light here today. That's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, I did want to add something else to that too, is that um, same way, like if you, like you smell something, like I love scents, you know, everything that, and you smell something and it reminds you of a place or a person or whatever. And music does that too. So many times yeah, when true. I want to transport myself, right. Or, or I just want to bring up those emotions and that time in my life or someone, you know, there's songs that you hear and you're like, oh, I thought of, like you were saying, you send certain songs to your friends. I'll hear a song. I'm like, totally thought of you. Yeah. You know, this just came up. This song just popped up on my phone. Oh, um, but you can actually do these kinds of exercises and, and journal and see what you're feeling, you know, about certain situations or whatever. And if it takes you back to something, you're like, what music would kind of like really take me there? Oh, I love and see that. and explore. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of creative ways to connect journaling with movement and music. Oh, that's that's awesome and exciting at the same time. You know, I I, I you know, I one of the so this is really kind of the gist of the show is that I invite manifestors to come here who are living their life, their best life, and actually you know took that bold leap of faith and you know whatever came out on the other side of that <laughs> is what you're in fact sharing with the world. 
like you said, of course, there's ups and downs to everything. Just knowing how to navigate the trials and actually dance to the joys, both dance to both. Let's all dance to both. I I like to say at the end of the day that we all have the ability to set the musical soundtrack to our own personal movie. You know, what's that, you know, Rocky song playing in the background? What's that, you know, unstoppable Sia song that keeps you going through the day or starts you off in a different way. But for you, I want to ask, you know, the extraordinary person that is you, Ketty, because you are extraordinary in many respects. A lot of people who, who, who've been blessed with knowing you certainly can speak to that point as well. You know, you embrace a spirit of learning, you, you show up in a way that, you know, like elevates the energy in the room. So with extraordinary people like you, I'd like to, like I said, get my own tips, but also share with others so that you might have information that could be the catalyst to moving someone else to understanding better their dreams and to feeling alive on the daily. So here we get to manifest. So with that, what do you think is the one thing that moves you forward on your journey in life? I definitely think it's my persistence. Okay. I'm very persistent. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I was younger, my parents would say that they would call it something else. They would say that I was stubborn or hard headed, you know, but I'm very persistent. I don't know what it is, but even when I've had a difficult day, you know, or I'm having a difficult time. I I really do exude like every day that I wake up, I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, going for it again, you know, and even if my best is 50%, right, that day, but for some reason, I I, I always picture myself like, you know, those inflatable clowns that people are like, and they go down and they come back up and they down and they come back up. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) I really am like that. I don't know why, honestly, I guess it's just something naturally inside of me. But the other thing too, is that when I think about the gift that my father gave me specifically, because he was a, a political prisoner and he was the one that really was like pushing for us to come to this country and watching both of my parents work so hard right. um, to give my sister and I, you know, all the opportunities that we would want. Um, and then also knowing so many people that 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 have even more, you know, hurdles and challenges. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, I I can't waste this opportunity that I've had, you know, that I've been given, that I've been blessed with. Yeah. And we we all take a lot of things for granted. I've caught myself too. Um, and it's like, yeah, no, this life isn't meant to be wasted. I went on a retreat with my good friend, Reverend Eddie Rodriguez to Barbados, and he took us to the cemetery where Neville Goddard is is oh, buried. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't realize, no. I, that's a fun fact for me. I didn't even know he was buried in Barbados, but that's, yeah, I he's love Neville there. Goddard, power of attention, yeah, power of awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks, thanks to Eddie, I was introduced to Neville Goddard and he was from Barbados and that's where he's buried. And so Eddie um, had us like find, you know, a rock or a stone or whatever and walk and just walk around the cemetery and have that be whatever it is that you feel has been holding you back from living your, your, your true bold, you know, your bold life. And we needed to find somewhere to leave it and decide that that's where we were leaving it. We were burying it there. And, um, this was before I started simply M and I remember him telling us that the dash on the tombstones between the dates are all the songs that were never sung, the dances that were never danced, the books that were never written. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh boy, because I was a dancer who had stopped dancing. And again, everyone's a dancer. I was just a human who stopped living. I was being a human doing, not a human being, right? Amazing. And that really like that, I was already starting to look at all these things, but just wondering, well, how am I going to turn this ship around? Yeah. But when he said that, and when I was in that cemetery, I was like, oh gosh, you know, if, if it said 1977 through, you know, the year that that was back then, like it was 2000. 17 or 18 i think i'm like would they be dances that i didn't dance i was like yes and that scared me okay first of all neville goddard <laughs> is like the father of of intentional thinking and a lot yeah. of the people who are motivated or uplifted by thoughts to make things and the power of intention, the power of awareness, consciousness, living in a conscious state. That's who he is. So the mere fact that you were at his resting place, like literally this man who has changed so many people's lives is profound in and of itself. But that coupled with this wonderful ritual that he did with you 
that, yeah. you know, had it not happened, you might not have woken up, basically become aware, <laughs> you know, that this yeah. life is once around. How? I got goosebumps. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, so at that point in time is when you decided that you're going to leave the obstacles behind and move forward accordingly. You know, honestly, it was, it was one of the many because I had been stuck for, for several years. Um, and, and, and I, I was, I was kind of, I had lost my way, right? I had lost my way. And that was already around like a, a point in time. And Eddie is an amazing coach and he's my, he's like my brother. And he was really, again, he was really in the, he was, he was the one looking at that chest and saying, you still have one more move. You actually have many, that's so you know, that's but so that's one of those moments that I carried with me deeply and profoundly. And I still think about it. And whenever I have a moment, like we all do where I'm, I'm scared to do the next thing or whatever. I remind myself of that dash oh. and I remind myself of that rock because if not, we think we have all the time in the world. Um, and we do have time, but we don't know how much. And I had lost sight of that. Um, so yeah. And as far as Neville Goddard, you know, interestingly enough, and I'm sure, you know, you know, in his time, everyone thought he was, you know, kooky, you know, yeah. they were like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, but, but now we know that it's a hundred percent true that to be, to already feel, yeah. you know, the wish fulfilled and to already feel it and see yourself. I mean, it's so powerful. It's so inspirational. Yeah. That's amazing. And let's say it didn't work for all the people who are like, Oh, it's still crazy. Let's just say it didn't work. How does it hurt? You know what I mean? Like, well, you know, I think, I think it doesn't hurt <laughs> to pay you can or anything. you can't is clearly up to you for sure. Right. right. And at the end of the day, if it will work or it won't work is whether you decide you choose yeah. to decide whether that you leave those obstacles behind you symbolically. Right. Yes. And beautifully. So, because what greater place to do so with someone who, you know, now your life can go on how you yeah. see fit. And, you know, it's not always going to be the effortless flow, but the fact that you remind yourself that you already buried that, let it go. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. I was saying over and over again in Italy when I was there, you know, la charmi andare la dolce vita. Help me let go so I could live the sweet life. That oh, is like, fun. get me out of my own way. You know, and, and, and I think that to actually acknowledge something like that, what you did, that whole process is very bold because in and of itself to say that I'm no longer going to let those things about me that are not the highest stop me and, and fall into that beautiful, wonderful, perhaps stubborn labeled by some, but persistent by those who see the power in that yeah. is just life changing. And I love that you brought that out. So one of the things I want to ask you is what has been your favorite part in your journey so far? Tell us where you are right now. You're in your beautiful location. Tell us a little bit about that and what has been your favorite part to see Simply M come to life. Wow. Okay. So I definitely, my favorite part of this journey has just been the way that at every turn and at every step, I've just met the most beautiful, the most perfect people. Um, to help me just share the message. I mean, from the moment I had the thought, true story is I was running, I was jogging. I'm not going to say running. I was jogging, walking briskly. <laughs> I like to run, but I'm not a fast runner. <laughs> but, you know, I was doing my thing around my neighborhood and this whisper came to me, simply am, simply am. And I'm like, what is this? And I really didn't I didn't know. And then I started seeing lights and I started seeing women moving and dancing. And so it took a while before I started to like string it all together. But I remember saying to myself, um, I really want to create a logo. I want to pick the colors intentionally. I have no idea how to do any of this. Mm. And I just started searching for people. And even from the graphic designer that I met to the web designer to to the, the people that helped me put together the materials that I bought for my studio, even the guys that came to do my mirror, I think they probably thought I was on something, <laughs> right? Because they're like, but, but we, they, they were just so excited. They're like, oh my God, well, we're so excited to do it. I'm like, yeah. I love these mirrors. Oh my God. Thank that's, you. Because cool. for a while I didn't have mirrors yet in, in, in the room. Anyways, but so I honestly, if I had to pick one, I don't think I can. I think my favorite part has been everyone 
that has been a part of it and everyone who will continue will be a part of it yeah, I love because that. it's just really brought me so much joy um that's amazing I yeah love even, even the, the the guys that installed the mirrors <laughs> Well, let's go back to like the beginning of the interview today. And when you were setting your intention for what you wanted to see come to fruition, what, what was that intention and what number did you pick in the magical guide? Okay. So, well, my number is 435. Oh, okay. I think it's outside of oh, the- No, sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Why did I just say that? No, it's not 435. It only goes up to 391. Like, 335 okay. is what I meant to say. I don't know why I said four. I I'll have to look up. Like, I'm pretty sure, but that's good. I said maybe I need to write a new book with 435. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll have to look up why that number. No, it's 335. Okay. Sorry. And so, what does it say on 335? Okay. So yeah. I didn't look at it ahead of oh, time. Wait, wait. So what was your intention for the, the conversation? Yes. So my intention was so that I could um have the perfect message to continue my healing journey oh, no. through Simply M the Movement because I am in the process of creating a program and retreats to heal oh. through movement, to oh, use okay. dance therapy and uh, inspired oh. techniques and ideas to do that. So this is something that I just recently really started, you know, refining and thinking about now that I have the website up and the studios done. So yeah. Oh, very exciting. So what does 335 say? Okay. And with that said, for anyone right now who feels that they're in a place that 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 they need that they need healing, right? That's I can relate to that. So we all can. All right. So it's the day would be November first. Be grateful for challenges. Oh, I love it. And what is it? Am, say? <laughs> it says I am grateful for all of my problems. After each one was overcome, I became stronger and more able to meet those that were still to come. I grew in all my difficulties. And this is by James Cash Penny. Oh, he was the, uh, Penny. the founder of JC Penny. Yep. <laughs> there you go. And that, I mean, he, that was quite an effort that he brought into the world, the department store. So uh, what a part of the, the, the insight speaks most to you that you could share with us today? Oh, definitely. So I'll be, um, I've been honest throughout, but just full transparency. Um, so I, I studied, like you said, dance and psychology, and uh, I was going to get my master's in dance therapy, but then I paused to take on a full-time job to help my mom after my parents' divorce. So I ended up veering into property management and real estate for the past you know, 25 years. And I started my own management business 16 years ago. And the tr truth be told, um, you know, I stopped, like I said, I just, I stopped doing the things that I loved. I stopped having that space for my creativity, for my voice, to move my body. Wow. And it was a couple years ago that I decided that I was going to repurpose my management office, um, make it a studio and venture out once again at, you know, 40, now I'm 46, back into this world. Um, basically, when I grew my management business, no social media, no anything. This is all very new to me. Yeah. And um, it was scary. It was scary, but I've kept going. And right now I'm in a place where I, I'm i just full into Simply M. This is, this is my mission. Um, and I still have, you know, time that I dedicate to my management business. So sometimes the problem becomes, and this is where I was thinking is like, wow, you know, how do I, like, when will I fully transition? If anyone out there can relate, if you, you know, have a nine to five yeah. or a business that you created, like in my, my case, that doesn't really speak to your soul that while I'm very grateful for it, I'm yeah. blessed, met amazing people. I've helped so many people and, and continue to do so. But truth be told, it's like oh. when I when I help others, when I'm talking about these things, when I'm creating, when I'm dancing, um, I teach a class on Thursdays for a breast cancer organization called the Tiger Lily Foundation. Oh, wow. And I've also I'm working with a 305 Pink Pack. And when I teach these classes, Meg, I can't tell you, like, I have to thank them. Like, thank you, because I you just give me so much. And that's how I felt when I worked with the girls. 
yeah. um, in my 20s. And so now for me, it's just sometimes it, I get a little bit in my head. I might be that chess player. Yeah. So you may have, you know, going, well, what's my next move? Yeah. Because this is what I want to manif continue manifesting is where my life is solely um, focused on simply M and, and help helping people heal and find their voice. Nice yeah, it's beyond nice. dance, yeah. right? It's about dance. It's about moving. It's about removing boundaries. Yeah. It's about getting creative, but it's more than that. I want to help everyone just create their, their, their perfect life and, and, and find their voice, find their creative voice. Wow. Yeah. I love it. So where in the passage, just read one line in the passage that yeah. you picked in 335 and, and what is maybe perhaps a little insight that we could all gain if we're all looking for that bold jump and that message that will bring us there. Well, the very opening line, to be honest with you, this is awesome. It is in the discomfort of life that we truly get to know who we are and what we are made of. God. If we went through life never experiencing heartache or challenges, we would never know what we are capable of surviving. Facing challenges on a daily basis, knowing that we have overcome low points and learned incredible lessons from them, we are grateful for our problems." This, yeah, this oh, wow. completely resonates to me because it, it is, you know, it's again, if anyone out there can relate, right? If like you're, if you love to bake cupcakes and you're doing that on the side and then you have, you know, you're a paralegal, yeah, and but, but you're just, you're just in your element, you're so excited, and then but you're tired and then you're commuting to your other job, it could be uncomfortable, right? It could be tiring and. There's a lot that you've got to figure out. So how this says it's in the discomfort of life, but I'm really living. So, I, you know, I, I know I'm really living now because I'm doing Simply M. So I, I'm you, definitely. But you pointed out as well, it's a part, all part of the healing journey. Every Everything yeah. that we go through is all a part of becoming who we're supposed to be and healing from the things that may have stopped us, those obstacles that we want to bury but we might bury them, but we still have to heal and, and, yeah. and trust and have that hope and have that faith that you talk about. And so here we are back at the wonderful beginning with a the theme boldness, be my friend and God, everything that you're doing and everything that you're saying, and even in your actual nine to five business coming into the simply M the movement, this beautiful place, you can tell even from where you're sitting, that it's inviting, it's welcoming, it's pretty, it's fun. It's all of the things that a, a girl with a tiara would might want to show up in. And certainly, you know, moving and helping people, reminding them that to move again, even in the discomfort of life is what your message is yeah. and what you're going to be doing so that everybody shows up the truest form of themselves, that most authentic. What would be your final inspiration for all of us today after we've had this wonderful opportunity to hear the extraordinary that is you. What is your final inspiration, Ketty? Well, I would definitely tell everyone, this is one of my favorite things to say is that we don't stop dancing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop dancing. Love it. Yep. <laughs> and, and, and not growing old in the sense of years. I think growing old is a beautiful thing. I think you grow bolder, not older. Oh, but yeah. It, but, yeah, but it. <laughs> yeah. But in the sense that, we grow older and that our spirit starts to shrink, right? Our, our hope and our, our vision shrinks. Um, and, and we don't, that's not what we're meant to do. We're, we're meant to be expansive. Um, we're meant to move with life. We're meant to move through life and what better way to do it than with music and movement. Ah, I love it. And I have to show you all Oh my goodness, did I, oh, I have to, I have to put it up here. Hang on. So this is her beautiful Simply M the movement. How can we find you, Ketty, in this world? Where can we go to dance with you at Simply M the movement? Thanks, Meg. Well, all of my platforms, TikTok, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, they're all Simply M the movement. Can you do so me a favor and can you spell it out so those who are listening on the podcast can, can write it down if they need to? Absolutely. S I M P L Y M T H E M O V E M E N T. And is that dot com or dot org? Dot com. Dot com. So dot C O M. So simply M, the movement dot com is where you can go to find more about Ketty. And I know that you do hold 
seminars and workshops in your location, in your space. Is there something coming up in the near future? I know I saw something out there, you know, that people can, can, you know, take a, you know, a look at and perhaps, you know, go check it out themselves. Yes, definitely. Well, right now, what I do have ongoing is a free virtual dance class every Thursday at 530. Um, it's on my uh, link tree on my social media and you can sign up and check it out. It's a great class. I do have my full group class schedule on the calendar as well. Okay. Um, this Sunday, I do like to sponsor, like to help, like you said, and I like to support other people um, and other folks. I think it's super important. Um, the Run Attic is having a special event here at the studio that I'm hosting oh, awesome. and it's about how to fuel your run. Okay. Um, so, so I'm going to be hosting that. And I am planning to create retreats and programs about healing through movement, healing through dance. So I'll definitely keep my social media updated with that. So just so you can do me a favor, we're talking about Instagram. So at what is the, the Instagram handle? It's the same. I have the same handle for Instagram. So it's once again, it's S-I-M-P-L-Y-M-T-H-E-M-O-V-E-M-E-N-T. Okay, that's awesome. So you guys heard it, all these wonderful things that are coming up in her studio and certainly in the future. And I just would really encourage all of you to contact her, maybe message her on her Instagram handle, you know, if there's something that resonated with you that you're going through that you might want to, you know, reach out to her and 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 get some more inspiration, which is really what she's about and and dance and moving and all of the above. And with that, I'd love to invite you all to my event at Books and Books coming up on May 5th. It's going to be a dance party called La Dolce Vida, Night of Awakening Your Creativity. And it's time to remember to play as I introduce once again, Butterfly Awakens and have the wonderful, you know, sounds of John Sachs, the DJ Lawrence, the entertainer, the painting of Hector Prado, my daughter singing. Hopefully Kenny will come and dance with us. I would hope yeah. so. if not, you got to go to Simply M the Movement studio to check it out. Like she said, go to simplymthemovement.com, see what she's all about, and then go to do a visit and check it out yourself because I'm sure if she gets you dancing, then perhaps all of those wonderful blocks will move away and you'll start dancing to a better day. So what is next for you, Ketty, today? Like what is, I, I see all these wonderful events, but for you and your life and your personal life, where are you going to take this party? Honestly, I'm in a I'm in a really like good place as far as the direction that I'm going in. I'm just so focused on simply on the movement. I have my luckily I have a very supportive partner <laughs> because I do put in sometimes, you know, a lot of hours into yeah. running both. Um and we're just really happy to just live our lives together. Mm -hmm. I I love living in Miami. I love the friends that I have. My family is very small, but we're all very close. Um, I did recently lose my my fur baby Lola. Um, oh, yeah, uh, thank you. In January, I had her since she was two months old. Um, she was 13. She got liver cancer suddenly, and I think that one of the next things for me would be once I'm ready is is, is to get another another fur baby in her honor. I love and it. I feel like she's she's with me all the time. Yeah. I like to think that the do dogs or animals in general are animal guides and without them, you know, taking care of us, then we can't take care of other people. So I love that. I'm sorry, Lola, we dedicate this show to you, my friend you out so there. Much. Thank you for watching over her, Ketty. And then, you know, that on the other side of Rainbow Ridge, you say hello to my, my, my babies too. But with yeah. that, you know, I want to thank you so much, Ketty, for joining me today. This has been an utmost pleasure. You are delightful. And like I said at the outset, but you are a light and certainly what better theme boldness be my friend on episode 111 and the magic that might ensue from this i wish all the best of life for you and i can't wait to dance and see all that you do because i will be there with you for sure so Thank all you of so you I, I i go visit ketty herve at her simply the movement.com at her studio and i want you to all remember that you're here to be the deliberate creators of your life to dream big get inspired and get ready to manifest the life of your dreams i'm wishing you all bliss thank you again so much ketty and We'll see you soon. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, everyone. Be blessed.